Gates here from Pop Turn Day speaking to Amberly Gonzalez about Tarot, which is going to be in theaters May 3rd. Welcome back to the show. It's always good to see you. Feels like home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for a little bit of context for the listeners and viewers, I mean, you and I are horror movie buddies. I mean, it's mm-hmm. been evident on past episodes we've done interviews. Yes. This is special because it we're is. talking about Tarot. You know, so like so many picture screen gems, May 3rd, you know, nationwide. It's, it's crazy. Like, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. It's definitely a milestone. I mean, I, as you know, like grew up watching movies and screen gems in general. I mean, they make amazing movies. Working with Sony Pictures has been a dream. And not just that, we got to shoot in Belgrade, Serbia. Mm-hmm. Initially, we were supposed to shoot in Winnipeg. And then I get a call from my team one day, like, hey, um, you know, <laughs> how, how would you feel about shooting in Serbia? And I'm like, what? Shut up. Like, they were laughing so hard. But yeah, it was quite the adventure. It's interesting because this process from, you know, the before filming and after filming, so mm-hmm. much has happened with this project, right? Like, before you even went to camera, there's always going to be kind of changes and everything. So I'm wondering from a journey storytelling perspective storytelling journeys perspective does it feel like one big kind of journey with like multiple steps or does it feel like that like before filming and after filming kind of journey like I'm curious about that I feel like being on this side of it now where we're you know we're posting every day there's like new content coming out and there's like they're so good at their social media too like we're really engaging but somewhere in the middle between like rapping and now, there was definitely a hiatus where like you kind of forget that you did that. And then suddenly <laughs> it's like you're brought right back. So it feels linear in that way that it feels like it's been like two years of us working on this, like from me auditioning to now, like it's been that long. And so much has happened in between, but it it does still feel like you kind of pick up where you left off. Not everyone can say that they like they could work in horror movies and have a good time, but like it's not one another thing to say they're like a fan of those movies. You're a big fan of those films. Does that is that like a unique situation in your opinion? Like the fact that like you're a big fan of it. Like, do you think it elevates kind of the experience for you from a mindset, like acting perspective? Like, I'm just curious about that. Absolutely. I I have watched so many movies <laughs> that <laughs> like finding myself in the middle of it like I had moments while I was filming that I was like oh my god it's like this is my movie like I'm in it so it's this like outer body experience where you're like I'm gonna be watching myself but I'm having a moment of awareness that this is happening right now before anybody else gets to see it and it definitely like you know, my inner child, there's like all of these, like the dreamer in me, the fan in me, the artist in me, all of them are just kind of existing equally. And it's really special because I mean, this team in general, like I'm so grateful for the opportunity and to have given a chance to just like really dive in. Like, I feel like we really dove in into this movie. People are going to love it. Like there's just so much that happens. It's so adventurous. I just feel like it's hilarious because, you know, sticking with the, the Sony Pictures kind of horror movie family, so to speak, like Thanksgiving that came out, a lot of that cast mm-hmm. that I've interviewed, like they're scared of horror movies. And I, find, right. I always find that the craziest thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, how are you going to watch yourself? No. And for me, like there were moments where we were creeped out on, on, on set because- yeah. You know, like it just all looks so real. Like a lot of the times it looks real. There's like this one set where it's like a whole house where, you know, you see it in the trailer. They kind of go visit and they're in this house. It's like the lighting and the props and everyone around. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, we're shooting a scary movie. You never stop thinking about the fact that you're filming a horror movie. So it's exciting. It's really cool. Um, I definitely was probably like the biggest horror fan while we were shooting. And I was like just geeking out the whole time (laughs) it's so funny we always talk about like we always recommend like horror movies to watch and it's like funny we're always like oh yeah like we're gonna add to like the like the marathons and like the spooky season october it's like your film is in the mix now if you think about (laughs) what is it crazy yes it's true it's it's crazy and i do think it's gonna be one of those classics go-to's I did watch the movie. I was uh, in New York last week and I was with uh, Jacob and Avantika mm-hmm. and they gave us like a little private screener and we were loving it. Mm-hmm. You know, the movie has a lot of like comedy in it. It's visually beautiful. Oh. It's 
terrifying. Like I it's can't all, wait. Really good jump scares, really good suspense, and like the music, the score, like all of it together is just like the most magical movie going experience. And that's why I'm so excited to go to the movies and watch it with people. Like I love that feeling, you know? It's One immersive. Thing, the like, horror movies are so immersive too these days. Yeah, you're it's shocked. so immersive. And you're like, oh, what's going to happen? You're with your friends and you get scared. It's vulnerable. It's like fun. It's, yeah. This is so funny that we're doing this interview because 90% of our conversations, <laughs> I'm not even kidding you, like more, like 90% are like about horror movies. Like, if you think about it. I'm like, did I just make it? Like I made it. I'm good. Like shut down. Because <laughs> I'm always like, watch this movie. And then you're like, I have watched it. I'm like, of course you have. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like, I know. Here we it, are. It, here we are. Um, Shifting gears a little bit. Um, you know, Star Wars Outlaws, I mean, I just wanted to kind of ask you a little bit about that, um, kind of switching gears, like, we, like kind of on the topic of like being immersive and everything, like the video game world, the Star Wars world, when does it start hitting you that like, you're part, like it's two separate worlds if you think about it. It's like the video game world that you're jumping into, but you're also jumping into the Star Wars world. Does it feel like you're jumping into two worlds? You know what I mean by that? I do because, I mean, motion capture, it's its own machine. Yeah. But then Star Wars is like the biggest franchise of our yes. lifetime. It's feel. like two th- it's so separate. It's two very unique worlds. Yeah. Um, I've been doing video games since I started acting. Yep. So for me, that world is a bit more familiar. Mm-hmm. But this is the first time that I am leading a game. So mm-hmm. it's definitely a lot more hands-on. Uh, but I mean, entering the franchise of Star Wars in general, it is unreal. It is honestly unreal. And I am still having moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, pinch me. Like when Star Wars is literally posting about me and my game and my face is there. And that's like the work Mm -hmm. I've been working on for two years. Like that is so surreal. And I'm having moments of like, wow, wow. And it's great. because that hard work is paying off. Oh, and it's really hard work. And I think that's the coolest thing. And like, even with Taro, I mean, I know... Like, you watch, like, the trailer for that movie, and it's, like, there's a scene of all of you, like, in the car, and then, like, some things might happen to your character or not, but we'll see. (laughs) But, like, I know that, like, how much work just went into, like, that scene. And I know that that scene probably has, like, 50 stories behind it. You know what I mean? I'm just, you know what I mean by that, right? It's, like, so many. You watch it, and it's a moment, but we're, like, oh, my God, we spend two (laughs) days in the middle of nowhere. We shut down this giant bridge two like giant night shoots it was just like it's a such an adventure you know we spent like three months or so like Mm -hmm. creating all of this and and in an hour and a bit you get to see that entire three months and and consolidated into one and things that get cut out things that get changed things that get like reshot you know it's like only the the people who are there experiencing it will ever really fully know the full experience. Yeah. It's so cool to see it kind of be made once again, once it gets edited mm-hmm. and color corrected and all of these elements that people who touch it and all the artists who get to like deal with it after we're done with it. A hundred percent. Wild. Making me ma- being an actor is wild. And I keep like all my friends and I always say this, like we do auditions and suddenly you're like, wow, I just like, got murdered I was a cop and then I was like a single mom who was running away from whatever all in the span of like an hour of shooting and it's like that's our world you are it it, is yeah so- you, you live in a world where it's like you're wearing you're literally like wearing many hats if you think about yeah. it but you're also like there's so many misconceptions one I feel like people just assume that actors know what's going on I feel like that's something that <laughs> <laughs> like will just I don't even, and I'll talk to actors about it. And they're like, I don't even know why people just would even like assume that in the beginning. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, Yeah, that's true. But it like really, no, but the other thing that you bring up is it really is like you have all these journeys and they happen. Some are longer than others, but it really is on to the next until it's not on to the next. And like the movie's coming out and you're revisiting. And then it brings you right back. Yeah. Yeah, It's like we have different like side plots and storylines and. It's kind of cool though. And it, it's, you know, seeing a version of yourself from like two years ago, for example, mm-hmm. like it brings you back to, you know, how much you've grown, what has happened since. It's like this immortalized version of yourself. And that's why I'm not super self-critical when things come out. And I love watching myself because it isn't really me. It's it's a character that I worked on yeah. that it's attached to all of those memories and who I was back then. 
-hmm. And so it's kind of this like full circle moments for me where I get to celebrate like births and deaths of selves. And right. it's interesting too, because, you know, the, the getting to those journeys and getting those opportunities is a combination of working with your team, a combination of working with your network and friends and collaborating and everything. You have yeah. worked in many different worlds. Not only have you played many different characters, the worlds are different in a yeah. lot of ways that just happens, but there is a little bit of strategy behind that too. Like you do want to work in all those worlds. <laughs> you do. And I, I always said it, I'm like, I don't want to be put in a box. No. It was one of the first like pieces of advice that I got when I was in theater school, when I was just training to be an actor and I hadn't worked professionally yet. I remember mentors being like, don't let them, you know, put you into this. Like, you're not just a pretty girl and you're not just going to be the girl next door and you're not going to be this. Like you have depth and you can be ugly and like, don't be afraid to be ugly. And that's not just like an aesthetic thing. It's about being real and vulnerable yes. and showing sides of yourself that you might be scared of. Mm -hmm. And that vulnerability will in turn lead you to so many different kinds of roles, you know, like I can go from, you know, being a teenager on, on Ginny and Georgia to being this like badass scoundrel and Star Wars. And, oh, yeah, that's true. And, you know, it's, it's just like it is so they couldn't be more different. So <laughs> the fact that people are complex, we have layers, we can do so much. I don't limit myself. I literally look at a script and I'm like. I could do all of them. I could do any role. Mm. And when I don't know how to approach it, that's the challenge. And that's the exciting part that I'm mm. going to learn how to lean into that and how to transform by simply saying yes and being vulnerable, not being afraid to be flawed and, and feel embarrassed. Like that's not a thing. I think we grow through those challenges. So for me, I'm just like, come at me. Let's see what else is going to, you know. How conscious of you are like how conscious of the audience member are you when you're like preparing for roles because it's i feel like it's this cool kind of ping pong match a little bit because you really want to kind of for yourself know who this character is know what you're getting yourself into but i feel like the whole point of this whole thing is providing an escape like and providing something for the audience right so i'm just wondering if there's like ever times even while you're filming are you ever like conscious of the audience member like watching tarot like do you ever think about things like that? Like, I'm curious. I think about it in the sense of how to tell the story. Yeah. I want to make sure that my character is behaving according to telling the story. Mm -hmm. It's I'm not um, in my head or self-conscious about what it's going to look like. If, it, if it's not, it's not an ego thing that comes up. It's more like, is this serving the story we're trying to tell? And that's when I think of the audience. Because a lot of the time, my character isn't even going to know how they're per perceived. So actually thinking of the audience can be detrimental. You have to kind of stay in your character's own inner world while also umberly thinking, is this how is this serving the story? Am I telling the story correctly? Absolutely. It's convincing enough. And, and you know what? That was like really instilled in me when I worked with Bob Odenkirk on Nobody. He yeah. would always go and watch playback and he would invite us to watch and he would watch himself and literally have like a conversation with himself as if that wasn't him. It is the character. And he's like, I believe that guy. Mm, I don't believe that. I want to I want to be stronger here or whatever. Like it was so inspiring to me to kind of detach from the self, but really see it as a character and just focus on how to tell the story. And that has really allowed me to be so free in it because I'm just a part of it. You know, it is so beyond who I am and what I play. It is a part of such a bigger picture. And I think that's really cool. You're a hard interview because I totally like, like nobody in Ginny and Georgia. It's like, there's so many projects to talk about when I have you on the show. And like, it's not like I forgot about them, but I'm like, I'm focused on like now, but it's just like, I don't I know. <laughs> oh, what a blessing. Honestly, I feel, I feel very fortunate to work yeah. in this industry every single day mm -hmm. it does not go unseen and and for me to not acknowledge the fact that it is not an easy mm -hmm. industry um i just truly feel like i meant to do this yeah. and as i continue to grow as a person uh my artistry follows and it's mm -hmm. all mirrors of each other so absolutely i feel really lucky and grateful i have an incredible team and support system mm -hmm. and i just trust wholeheartedly that what's meant for me will come and I just have to be prepared for it. And it's only going to get bigger and bigger because yes, baby. <laughs> it's going to be great. And Taro's in theaters May 3rd. They're going to be able to check that out.
Uh, I'm really always great chatting with you. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. Thank you. Can't wait to see you very soon. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Instagram is where they keep up to date. There's tons of updates all the time, right? Yes. At Umberly. I am still on X, Twitter. I don't know what to call it. Mm-hmm. The the I don't know. The fandom there is really cool, but it's also at Umberly. Do you, have ske- do you ever schedule like when you're going to post about Taro and then Star Wars or is it just whatever happens Honestly, and happens? <laughs> I get that question all the time. My friends are like, what do like, you do when like, really, like current right now. things come out? I'm like, yeah. I don't know. I just hope that people are not sick of me being like, and this, and this, and this, and also this. And I'm so grateful. And I'm so like, I think I, it, there's so much abundance and mm-hmm. I'm so grateful for that. But it's, it's the timing too. Very it's chaotic. Like, you got to get it all. Like swiping through stories. And I'm like, oh, wait, where do I, who am I? But you know, um, it's kind of great when it all comes out and I'm like, you know, because it isn't just about the character or the project. It's like people who follow me, I think, follow me for like Umberly. Like, what is Umberly up to? Which I think it's really cool that they're not just attached to one role that I've played. They're just really following me on my journey, just as I am. I'm like, I don't know what's gonna come next, but come on, you know, let's let's do this together. Absolutely, no, for sure. Well, this has been Pop Turnative. YouTube.com slash Pop Turnative. Previous episodes, popturnative.com has other content as well. You, of course, can catch Umberly Gonzalez and Taro in theaters May 3rd. Until next time, this is Umberly and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. This has been an Autograph Communications production.